Hey everyone, it's Charlene. Thanks for joining me. Today we're using the Avery L Howdy Stamps and Dies and I'm going to be showing you some multi-layer stamping. So I'm going to start out by positioning all of my stamps where I ultimately want them and then I'm going to take a picture with my phone. Now I can close my lid and I'm going to pick up whatever is going to be the farthest back layer of my scene that I'm creating. So in this case, it's going to be the tractor, the trees, the little duck, as well as the little grass pieces. So now I can stamp these out in some Copic friendly ink, cause I'm going to be doing a fair amount of coloring today. And I'm stamping those. And then with what's left on there, I'm going to bring in some masking paper. So I'm just going to go ahead and stick the masking paper right over the stamp and then I'm going to shut my Misty over on top of it. That way I can use up some scraps of masking paper and I don't have to break out a whole sheet for these tiny images. Once I have those stamped, I'm going to set them aside and I'm going to go ahead and color my images. You can color as you go, which is what I'm doing, or you can wait and color everything at the end. And that's going to make some more sense as we move on here. I'm starting with my cute little duck and I'm coloring him in Y15 and Y17. And then for his little bill, as well as his legs and feet, I'm using E93 and E95. For the tractor, I'm going to be using R14 and R17 for the body and then some cool grays for everything else, C0, C5, and C7. I generally shy away from using so many markers on a smaller image, but here I really wanted to try and capture the shine of a tractor on a sunny day with the sun shining down. Once I have that done, I can move on to my trees, and for my trees, I'm gonna be using YG63 and YG67. These are really nice yellow greens, and for the trunks, I'll be using E47. Once my coloring's done, I can come in and start with my first layer of masking. So I took those stamped images. It's a little hard to see on camera, but there is some faint stamping on there. And I trimmed them out using some fine detail scissors. And now I can put down the duck as well as the tractor and the trees. I also have some very tiny scraps that I cut out to use for the little puffs that are coming off of the tractor there that makes it look like it's out working hard in the field. So I like to use a little pokey tool to move around these smaller images. I also use that same pokey tool when I'm trying to move around small stamps. It's just a lot easier to maneuver small items with that rather than trying to use my fingers. My fingers tend to get in the way and mess things up. I don't know if you guys have that problem as well. So the masking paper sometimes can be a little bit tricky to get the backing off. Usually I just run my fingernail or that pokey tool along the side of it a little bit until I can catch the paper to pull it off from the release tape. So once I have all of the masking down, I'm gonna be able to go back in and stamp my second layer of stamps. So this is where taking that picture at the very beginning is helpful because it will help you remember what your idea was and where you wanted to put everything. It's a little easier to know where to stick that stamp if you have that picture to reference back to. So I've got my stamp down here and this is in some more Copic friendly ink. We're going to be doing some more coloring and I'm stamping right over that tractor because the goal here is to make it look like the tractor is on the dirt road. And you'll see when we pull up that masking later, it turned out really nice. So now I have a second piece of masking paper here that I'm stamping out the barn and road on because I'm going to mask on top of the tractor because I actually want to ink blend over everything in order to create my background. I'm gonna be creating the sky as well as the grass. So I'm trimming this out again with some detail scissors and you don't have to be super exact. You do want to make sure that you're cutting on the line or just slightly inside of it. Otherwise you'll have some white area around on your card. But if you do have a few white spots here and there, I'm going to show you how to fix that as well. 
So again, using my pokey tool, I just find that so helpful and handy to maneuver things around on my card. And when you are using masking paper like this that you're gonna ink blend over, a couple of tips. One, you wanna make sure it is pressed down really, really well. And two, try to use the least amount of ink as possible because you don't want that ink to smudge onto your card. I've had that happen in the past and it's just no fun. So I have a little strip of masking paper here and I'm gonna go right across. I'm just using my glass mat there in order to get a straight line. And now I can come in with some distress ink. So I've got some tumbled glass here. This is a really pretty color to use when you're creating a sky. And I'm going very lightly over this with my blending brush, starting from the edge and working my way to the middle. And I'm not putting very much ink on my brush. It's easy to add ink and it's hard to take it away, if not impossible. So once I have a color that I like, I'm gonna take off that piece of masking tape and I'm gonna adjust it up so that way I can go ahead and color the bottom two thirds of my card using the mode lawn. So I have that down there. And something to keep in mind when you're peeling off the masking tape, just make sure that you're careful not to pull up any of those pieces that you've masked over. So just take it slow, go nice and easy, and everything should work out just fine. So I've got the mowed lawn here, and I'm again starting from the edges and working my way towards the center. That is the best way to get kind of a nice, smooth, clean blend without having a lot of marking on your card. Now that that's done, I can peel off the masking tape, the masking paper I put along the center there, and I can also peel up and get the nice reveal of all of the colored images under there. And if you recall earlier, I did say you can color as you go or you can wait and color everything at the end. So certainly I could have waited and colored everything at this point, but I, I don't know, I think I like the reveal um, by pulling off the masking paper. So I tend to color as I go. And then also it, it breaks up the process a little bit. So you're not just doing a ton of coloring in one sitting. I like to kind of bounce around to doing different kinds of things for my card. I think it keeps me more engaged when I am card making. So now you can see the tractor there. Oh, I love this effect. I think it just looks so cool with the masking. It looks like it is right there on the road going on its way. And now I can color my barn and my road. So for my barn, I am coming in here with some R27 and R29, which is a little bit darker of a red from the, the reds that I used on the tractor. And then I'm gonna be using some C5 and C7 for the roof. And I'm using Y02 for the little bit of um, hay that's up there on the hayloft coming out. So once I have that done, I can do my road. And for my road, I'm using E11 and E15. So something to keep in mind when you are coloring and you're trying to figure out where to put your shading. In general, when you are working on roads or paths, it usually works well to put your darker color where the curve in the road is. So you can see I added that darker shade to those curves and then I came in with my lighter shade. So I mentioned a tip earlier about white space on your card around where you have masked the images. And this is what I'm fixing right now. I'm coming in with a green that's very similar to the grass and I'm just going in and dotting it here and there where there's any of that white space. And your color match doesn't need to be perfect. I used YG03. I did decide to go ahead and go back in and color in the window of the tractor. And I think I used some C7 for that. I just thought it looked a little nicer. Actually, it might've been C5. So I've stamped out my sentiment there. And then separately, I'm stamping out the cow with the little farmer boy and all of the animals. 
This is actually going to be sort of my top layer of my cart because I'm going to be popping this up once I get it all colored and die cut. So for my cow, I'm using some warm grays. I find warm grays tend to work well for animals. I'm using W0, W1, and W7. And then I'm also going to be using some R11, E15, Y21, and Y28. And that's going to be for the bell as well as the collar and the cute little pink nose. And you'll see that here in a moment. So once I get my cow nice and colored and shaded, I'm going to come in here with my little sheep and I'm using W5, W7, W0, and W1. And then I'm using some R11 to color in, I believe, the nose. Once I have that done, I can do my cute little pig. I love the little pig in this image. It's so cute. And I'm using R20 and R22, which are kind of like peachy pink colors. And I find that those work really well for a little pig in any kind of scene. Once the pig is done, you can see there now I'm doing that bell that I mentioned as well as the collar on the cow. Now I can move on to my farmer. For those overalls, I'm using B95 and B97. For the boots, as well as the hat, I'm gonna be using some E15 and E47. And then for the skin tone, I'm using E50, E51, and E53. I do bring in a little bit of pink for the cheeks, and for that, I'm using R11. And then for the hair, I'm doing kind of a blondish brown. I'm using E31 and E35. I think this little farmer boy is so cute with his little round face. And even on my male characters that I color in, I almost always add some cheek color because I think it makes them look more lifelike. Once I get the farmer done, I can come in here and color the little bird. I'm using R27 and R29. Those are the same colors that I used on the barn, so that kind of ties those together. And then E53 for the beak. So once I was all done, I decided that I wanted those little grass spots at the bottom to stand out some more. And so I'm coming in here with some YG17 to make those a little bit darker. Now keep in mind, I did use Distress Ink, which is a water-based dye ink, so that you can Copic color over. You don't want to Copic co color over a hybrid or a pigment ink, so just make sure you are using a water-based dye ink if you are going to be coloring over it. Now I can put my whole card together. I'm gonna have a really nice thin black border around my colored panel and I want that to be about a quarter of an inch away from the edges of my card card base there which is a two sized so it's four and a quarter by five and a half and I'm using some Gina K connect glue here this uh, is really a nice glue because it's kind of liquidy but it dries really strong I like that it's liquidy because it gives me some extra time to sort of move things around and make sure I get them right where I want them placed and so you can see I did a very thin black border for that part popping my cute little cow and everyone up on some foam squares and now all that's left is to do a little bit of detail work I'm going to come in here with a white gel pen there's no real rhyme or reason to this I'm just adding little lines and dots kind of where I think it will look nice and I'm sticking essentially to the edges of the images I tend not to do anything in the middle or towards the center of the images and I even added a little bit on the grass. All right, well here is my finished card. I hope you guys picked up some tips and tricks today. Please be sure to like and subscribe as well as hit that notification bell so that you will know about future videos here on the Scrapbook Pal YouTube channel. I hope you all have a wonderful day.